Today we're gonna add two photos together, blend them so they look like they are one photo, and then color grade everything. Hey there, my name is Ali. You can find me on Instagram at Photoshop Hustler. We'll start today's edit by pulling our first photo. This is like uh, photos, you can find them in the description below. They are completely free. Okay, this is the first photo. First thing, I'm gonna go to the crop tool by pressing C. Then I'm gonna use the ratio 4 by 5. This is uh, the best ratio for Instagram. I'm gonna leave the delete crop pixels off so I can adjust the image even more. I'm gonna press a click now. Then I'm gonna move the photo so that the part of the cave is in the center. This is where I'm gonna place my model, just in the center of the photo. Okay, now let me pull the photo of the model. Okay, in order to like cut this one, it's hard to cut him with anything except the pen tool because the, the, like, the automatic tools will detect differences in light and color. However, in this photo, the background is black and the model himself also has black colors. Okay, I'm gonna fast forward, skip this part, just to save your time. Basically, I'm just going like with the pen tool all around the photo. Okay, now once you're done, as you can see here, I'm having like the, a, a big circle around the light. I'm gonna show you why I made this circle. And I'm gonna press now right click, make selection, make sure you have zero feather, press OK. Now we have a selection, let's add a layer mask to delete it. Okay, now we have our image now deleted, all good. Now I want to apply a layer mask. I can't do, th do that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click rasterize layer first. It's important to rasterize layer in order to do edits. Apply layer mask, and now we have our model here. Okay, I'm going to use now the lasso tool. I'm going to try to select only the parts with the light. I'm not going to try to select his hand, neither the, like, the wooden part in the torch. Just his hand. So now once I selected his hand, I'm going to right-click layer via cut. What that does is it separates my selection into a new separate layer. Control Z and now let's change the blending mode to screen. Now it's only working as light. Okay, now I'm gonna like do a creative way to remove the edges, the hard edges. This will be by adding a layer mask. Then I'm gonna go to a brush. Using a black brush, black will delete actually. But using the black brush now, I'm gonna delete what I want. So. Now I'm gonna delete the areas which I want and I'm gonna flip it around. So deleting the areas I want and then I'm gonna hold control, press I. This will do the opposite of what we made, leaving the areas which I deleted only affecting my photo. So now everything is good. Let me group these two things together. Control G to group them together. So now I can resize them together without having any problem. Okay, now I'm gonna try, uh, try to adjust the size into the like the place I want. Let's see. Uh, okay, I guess that's good. Okay, we placed the model now in the place we wanted. Now, in order to make him look more realistic, we need to do two, two things. First is the light need to affect the cave. And the second part is that we need to give him some realistic shadows down there below his legs. Okay, I'm gonna start by doing the shadow by creating a new layer below the model himself. Let's call it shadow. And using a brush, I'm gonna tilt the brush as you can see like that. Tilting it down and trying to make the angle exactly where I want the light to be. Yeah, like that. But of course, I'm gonna use uh, like a different color. Uh, black, I don't know about black. First, I'm gonna just the... Uh, okay, no, I don't like the black actually. So I'm gonna go back, then I'm gonna sample a shadow color from the cave itself. It's really nice to use colors which are already on your image, it, it will make it look more realistic. 
Okay, as you can see, I'm just trying to draw like a line of shadow under his both legs. And of course, if it's like overlapping the leg from the front area, just take the eraser and just erase the parts in the front. Because the shadow should be only like behind the leg, not front of it and behind. Doesn't look realistic. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I want to erase the edges of the shadow with a low opacity brush. So erasing the edges so that the shadow looks like it's fading as it goes further from our model. And you can always like lower the opacity in the end. Always try to overdo stuff and leave the opacity higher so you can like decrease it anytime you want. Now it's time to add the light. I'm going to add a new layer, sample color from the light we have on top of the like the cave. And with a, like a 60% opacity, I'm just going to add two clicks of light. As you can see, this is my first layer. I'm going to put it to color mode. Then I'm going to press Ctrl J or duplicate this layer. So now I have two copies. One of them is going to be overlay and the other I'm going to leave it as color. And of course, lower the opacity if it's too strong. That's why I told you I always like to go too strong, then go down with the opacity. So you can have variation whether you want stuff to be too strong or not that strong. Okay, now since we blended the two photos together, time to blend everything. Curves adjustment, take the black points, pull them up a little bit, take the shadows, pull them down, and then go to the highlights, increase the highlights so that the lights look much better and much more marvelous. Okay, then I'm going to add another curves adjustment, but this time only for coloring. I'm going to change the RGB to blue. I'm going to take the shadows, which is down, make them blue, and take the highlights, add yellow to them. Let's jump to the red. Let's add some red to the highlights. I'm not gonna, this is cyan, opposite of red. So I'm gonna just add red in the highlights and add some cyan in the shadows. Let's go to the green. I'm gonna see, uh, no, I don't like the green. The magenta is better. I'm gonna add a little bit of magenta to the highlights. Okay, so now, as you can see here, the two things we did, the value adjustment and the color adjustment. Okay. Now I'm going to try to add, let's see, a photo filter maybe. I don't know if it will work, but I keep trying. Just double click it and put the mouse on it and keep scrolling down until you see a color that you like. Uh, I actually like the green. The green looks good, but I'm going to just do it with a low density and a low opacity. Okay. I guess we're good now. It's time to like Merge everything together, Control alt shift then press E, go to Filter, Camera Row Filter, so we edit the whole image in one go. Now I'm going to go to Radial Filter. I'm going to draw a circle around the middle part. This is the part where I want eyes to be attracted to. But we have the opposite. This red is the mask. It's telling you where the effect is going to affect. So I'm going to make it inside instead of outside, so it's only affecting the red parts we have. And then I want eyes to be attracted here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the brightness, increase the warmth of the photo by adding yellow and magenta, increase the clarity to make things clearer, increase the dehaze to remove the fog, making again things clearer, increase the whites, which is like uh, similar to highlights, and increase contrast. And let's press OK. So now the eyes should be attracted more to the middle part. As you can see, it's a very slight adjustment. But it's important to be slight so it's not very obvious to the eyes. Again, camera row filter, go to effects, increase the dehaze or decrease it. This is like adding fog or removing fog. I'm going to increase a little bit, just maybe 9 or 10, something like that. Then I'm going to add some vignette, which is basically a black circle around the photo. Okay, I'm going to go to camera calibration. I like camera calibration to see different variations of color. If you remove uh, move the blue to the left, it's going to make the blue more cyan. It's going to make the oranges and the yellows more red. And if you do the opposite, it's going to be the opposite. I didn't like that one, actually. Let's try the playing around with the green. Let's move all the greens towards the yellow a little bit. And let's move the reds more to the orange and the yellow. Let's see how it's going to look like. Uh, that's too strong. Let me bring it back a little bit. And let's bring the other one a back a little bit. And I like the color like that. Some clarity maybe to the whole photo. It's going to be nice. Okay. Okay, I actually like it really like that. One last adjustment. A new layer with a low flow and a low opacity. Make sure it's on overlay. 
and just sample any color of the highlights like I told you from the image always sample colors from the image and start painting all around your highlights it's a bit too like weak I'm gonna increase the opacity that's why still it's weak I want it to be like more obvious when I paint I'm trying to paint on the parts which the light is hitting so it's supposed to have highlights but the highlights should be different because we added a new source of light which is the red one that's why I'm painting highlights with this red color I'm gonna actually do it now strong and then like I told you after you do things strong you can always bring them back down until you're satisfied with the result so I'm gonna make it strong now I'm gonna add a lot of highlights like on all the highlights but then I targeted some dark areas which I don't want to target so I want this what I'm doing only to affect the highlights only to affect the very bright parts of my image I don't want them to affect like the dark areas I'm gonna do that using something called blend if it works by pressing double click on your layer and you have here the blend if the underlying layer when you move this black to the white you're only affecting white parts when you do the opposite you're only affecting black parts so in this case I'm gonna move the black to the right but now it's very harsh as you can see so I'm gonna hold alt and then hold click and move it to feather it out a little bit and press ok so see this layer it added a lot of interesting highlight to my photo and I guess that's it for today's tutorial if you have any comments or questions make sure you put them in the comment section down below thank you guys